This is a Vauxhall Astra VXR, and like many of you watching this video, I would have killed to have one of these cars grown up. It had that 240 brake horsepower engine, it had those seats, and it had that exhaust note. Now, before I get carried away down memory lane here, let me just say, if you're in the market for one of these, you've clicked on the right video, because we're gonna cover all the common problems, show you everything that tends to go wrong, so you can go out there and buy the best VXR possible. Now, let's go. So Colin, it's your VXR, how yep. long you had it? <clears throat> I've had it 14 years, bought it brand new, back in 2008. Uh, first 58 plate car I ever saw, my own car, own Reggie, so yeah. It's a real long termer, what kind yep. of problems you had in that time? Well, it's on its fourth manifold, slash turbo, um, every three years it seems to go, but um, ah, it's, it's running okay now, um, but it's been through a gearbox, Gear, gearbox has been refurbished in 2018. Gearbox. Um, so I, get, I was on a tour of Europe just before I went, they told me it was jumping out, uh, look after it while I'm away, so I uh, tried to. Uh, got it back in one piece, so went straight in, got sorted and it's been fine ever since. And you had to do the valve stem? Yep, valve stem's well, just yeah. done last week. Yep. Um, so I was blowing blue smoke, sent it traffic lights, um, blowing blue smoke, so not turbo, so took it in. Right, valve stems, got that sorted, timing belt, uh, water pump, all the usual sort of stuff. Um, yeah, pretty much. Sweet, and obviously a lot of people watching this are going to be on the market to buy one. Would you yep. recommend it overall? Definitely. I've loved it. I've never got rid of it. Uh, too sentimental. I've done European trips in it and stuff and just done too many things. Uh, but I, I would definitely recommend one to anybody who's thinking about it. It's a fun car. Uh, good noise. So launched in 2005, production was actually pretty short. It only ran till 2010. Now around about 2007, there was a facelift and we obviously got some special editions, just like this one. More on that later. The point I'm making right here is no matter what model year, no matter what version you're looking at, this guide will be relevant, so stay tuned. So as ever, let's kick off at the business end, the 237 brake horsepower turbocharged two litre. Now back in the day when this car was launched, it was the most powerful hot hatch you could buy. Nowadays, it's interesting, 240 odd brake horsepower is pretty standard for a car of this size, but back then, this was pretty lady. So the VXR certainly had the credentials. The engine was fed by the Borg Wartner Turbo. It had a Getrag developed gearbox. In case you don't know, these are some of the big heavy hitting names in the automotive world. However, as we heard at the beginning of the video, there are a few problems there. So let's get into that in a bit more detail. First problem, as we heard, is with the exhaust manifold. Leads off with the turbo and the issue is these can tend to crack. Now here's the problem. When you're viewing one of these cars, if it's already warmed up, a warmed up engine will hide a relatively small crack. The metal expands and there's no longer any crack there. So here's the first point. When you go and view one of these cars, make sure you've agreed with the seller ahead of time that they're gonna let you view it stone cold. In other words, make sure it's not been started that day and listen for blows coming from the front of the exhaust. Next up, let's talk about that KO4 turbocharger itself, obviously connected to that troublesome manifold. They can have issues too, unfortunately. Now the main symptom you're gonna get from that is hordes of blue smoke coming out the back when the car's on boost. Obviously we can't do that stood here, so stay tuned and I'll show you that a little later once we take this car out in the road for a bit of a rip. So the next issue is with that M32 Getrag developed gearbox. Maybe Vauxhall should have made some of their own components after all. Now the problem is the bearings tend to start to wear in the gearbox quite quickly. And thankfully it gives you a bit of warning. It will start to whine, but if that whining's ignored, then it's gonna cause a complete catastrophic failure and make a right mess inside that gearbox. Now as for the engine itself, one of the most common things you're going to find as a problem here is the valve stem seals that can tend to pop off and when they do it allows oil to run down the valve guides. Now main symptoms you're going to get of that is blue smoke coming out the back. Now it's usually not on boost, that would suggest more a turbo related issue. This more tends to be at idle or when you've been driving for a few moments. Think along the lines of being at traffic lights, stood stationary, and then as you pull off, you'll tend to notice it then. Bear in mind as well, these engines use a timing belt, so if it's coming up time for it to get done, a lot of specialists recommend around about that 45,000 mile mark, 
bring that into the deal, negotiate a little bit off the cost to get that done. Now, as for general bodywork, these cars are getting a wee bit older and given the type of car, gonna have been driven a wee bit enthusiastically. Any dodgy color panels, zone in on them and make sure everything's looking okay. Now, corrosion has become a little bit of an issue in the past few years, kinda to be expected, usually around about the front and rear wheel arches, so have a good check of them. And while I've got you here, also, have a good look at these seat bolsters. These seats look super cool, but the bolsters do tend to wear quite fast. Make sure they're not too tatty on the one that you're looking at. Now, there's a few issues left to tell you about, but these, quite frankly, are a bit more fun to talk about on the road. I've been looking forward to this since I've been 17. Let's go. <laughs> oh, wicked, man. It's proper old school, isn't it? Yeah, I've never driven one. I've had no. I've had several uh, uh, Focus STs. No. Obviously, I've got the Type no. R and stuff the now, but I've never actually driven one of these. It's not the fastest car in the world, but... I must say, though, it, it feels fast. No. It does feel quick. Oh, this thing. <laughs> There's no winning with that. What are we checking right away? Well, number one, couple of sounds to tune in for. And what we're looking at first is the suspension while everything gets up to temperature. Now, what we're on here, a little bit of a rutted kind of 80s, 90s back road. So it's not perfect. It's going to put the suspension through its paces, and that's what we want. The first noise you're listening out for is a sort of distinct knocking noise. Now, these were renowned for the drop links going bad, and if you're hearing that coming off of it, that's probably what it is. Next up, as we get through those bends, have a listen out for any kind of popping coming from the suspension. Now, what that tends to be is the springs. You get a kind of popping noise from it, particularly when you're turning that steering wheel. So listen out for that as well. So now that we're out on that road, everything's heated up. You want to get your foot on that throttle pedal a little bit. Reason being, remember we spoke about the turbo back at the garage, and this is the best time to do it. So get your foot in it a little bit and keep an eye out for that blue smoke out the back. Oh, <laughs> we pop. Now I can say this car is completely standard. It's not even been remapped and it feels really linear, really responsive. The power's not coming in and out and hopefully that's not the case on the one that you're looking at either. Now on the note of power output, be careful of any that's been tuned too far. Now the stock rods on the engine of these can take up to about 320 brake horsepower. Anything beyond that and you're kind of pushing the engine to its limits. But as I say, it's a tuner's friend this car, so don't necessarily be put off if the car's just had a remap. Now the final thing I want to bring up is that gearbox. Again, we spoke about this back at the garage and you know you're listening out for a whining noise. But on top of that, what you also want to check in that test drive, again, once everything's heated up, is that there's not excess movement when the car's in gear. If that's the case, again, that's a good indication that that gearbox is heading for trouble pretty soon. And there you go, you now have all the tips you need to go off and find yourself an absolute topper of an Astra VXR. I hope you enjoy the test drive, but don't click off of this video just yet. Stay tuned and let's see what this car scores on the reliability leaderboard. <laughs> so good, man. So the Vauxhall Astra VXR then, how does it score on a reliability leaderboard? Now, if it was a desirability leaderboard, and I've said this about a few cars now, it would be right up there. I really love these cars, a proper old school hatch. Unfortunately, however, it's not. As with most things on this channel, we're talking reliability. And on that front, we score the VXR a really rather respectable seven out of 10. Now, if you can manage to overcome those problems, find one that doesn't have the gearbox issues or turbo problems, you're on a winner. Now, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.